The desire for an affordable desktop Mac is as high as ever, and in a video today, we're going to discuss whether the M2 Mac Minis that we're expecting out this summer could be just the computer for you. Hi guys, welcome back to me, David, Talking Tech. And it seems like only a blink of an eye ago that we first saw Apple Silicon. The M1 chip came out in the spring of 2021, and since then, it's been placed in many, many machines, of course. And last month, we saw the highest iteration of it, the M1 Ultra, being put in the brand new Mac Studio. But that leaves a gap in Apple's market, in their desktop market at least. And we're wondering in this video whether the M2 Mac Mini that we're expecting out this year could be the computer that's going to fill that gap between prosumer and consumer. So let's take a little look at what we think we're going to be getting with the brand new Mac Minis later this year. So the desire for an affordable desktop Mac is definitely there. And also something modular. Now, Bear with me, I understand that neither the Mac Studio nor the Mac Mini are modular in the sense that you can replace RAM and storage, but they are modular in that you can put your own personality into them by choosing your own monitor, by choosing your own mouse and keyboard. The only affordable option you've got at the moment from Apple is to go with the iMac 24 inch, but of course that is all complete, it's inclusive. You don't get any input into it, it's a very fine panel, but if you're the sort of person that likes to inflect your own personality onto your setup, then really you haven't got anything to choose at the moment. And I think. I think that's what Apple is going to address this summer, possibly as early as WWDC, with the new M2 Mac Minis. And I think they could go a couple of ways with this. So at the moment, you haven't got many options. The Mac Studio was never designed to be an entry-level computer. It was always designed at the pro user, and the price reflects that. It's £2,000, which is not inexpensive, and not everybody has got that kind of money to spend, or indeed wants to spend £2,000 plus on a desktop because of course that is just for the computer after that you still need to buy the monitor the mouse and the keyboard so what i think apple could do to plug this gap in their lineup this summer they could give us two variants of the m2 mac mini they could give us the base level m2 mac mini to replace the intel one that we've currently got and then also they could give us an m2 pro mac mini with further options on it by way of io and also ram and storage which we'll look into in just a minute i don't think apple would give us a third option of an m2 mac chip doesn't make any sense it's getting too close in price then to the mac studio and if you're that kind of user that's where they want you to go towards Mac Studio. But for the consumer who wants to spend a little bit less, I think they'll give us that entry level M2 Mac Mini, as I said, and also with the Pro Chip in it. With the Pro Chip, you'd also be able to upgrade the unified memory because I know some people have been struggling using the 8 or 16. So if we can go up, say, 32 gigs of unified memory with an M2 Pro Chip in it, that should satisfy those users that have been doing some really good creator work with these wonderful, wonderful machines. And another benefit of the M2 Pro Chip would be the IO. I reckon there's no reason that they wouldn't go up to say four Thunderbolt ports on the back, which means also you'd have more options of how many displays you want to hook up. At the moment, you can only have one hooked up. But if we go the route of four Thunderbolts with an HDMI, you could have one monitor running from the HDMI, and then you could have another three running from the Thunderbolt connectors. So you could have as many displays running off this little mighty Mac mini as you want. And that again is all down to putting a pro chip inside it. The more I think about it, the more sense this really does make for them. And leading neatly on from IO to design, there's a couple of things they could do here colors. Because it's going to be a consumer level machine, I think they're going to draw a definite line in their consumer branded machines with the iMac, which is already colored, of course. And we've got, we expect at least, the M2 MacBook Air to be coming out this year in colors. I think also colors could come to the Mac Mini, making sure that everyone knows it is a consumer level. They want to make the consumer machines just that little bit more fun, a little bit more frivolous. So along with the colors, though, it could be that we get the plexiglass top. Now, there's been a lot of rumors this year about a, a Mac Mini Pro coming. I think they were getting confused of course, of what turned out to be the studio because the actual form factor is very, very similar. But what I think Apple might do is put the plexiglass on it, again, just to sort of wipe away from the Intel design. You can definitely look at these machines with the colors, with the plexiglass top, and you can tell that it's a brand new Apple Silicon M2 Mac Mini. So that's what I think we can expect to see, better I.O. colors and also the plexiglass top. Pricing. This is where I think Apple can be really, really clever and plug this little hole they've got in their lineup at the moment. They'll leave the entry level M2 Mac Mini at $699, but then I think they'll start this M2 Pro version, say around about £1,000. It makes sense because that's still affordable, even by the time you put your monitor and mouse and keyboard with it. But the other thing is, of course, then you could begin to upgrade it with RAM and storage. And if you find you're getting to the upper limits of what's available, right on the back of that, you've got the entry level. Mac Studio starting at $19.99. So it's kind of incremental and it fills that gap that they've currently got in the market. So that's what I think they'll probably do with it. And of course, the more people they can buy in at the lower price levels, the more people are getting into the Apple ecosystem. 
And then obviously, generally, once you've had a Mac Mini, you'll lead on to buying other Macs further down the line as well. But are you running a Mac Mini? And what would you like to see in this upgraded version coming this summer? They are such good machines. People keep on overlooking them, but they could be even better this summer. So let me know what you'd like to see in the new Mac Minis. As for availability, if you'd asked me about that a week ago, I would have had a very different answer and probably said not until later in the year in, say, the fall. But now, because of the report from Mark Gurman at the end of last week that I reported on, where he told us that nine Macs are currently being tested with them two chips inside them, and two of those are ready for immediate release, I reckon we're going to see two Macs at WWDC. The first of those will be the squared off colorful design M2 MacBook Air, and the other will be the M2 Mac Mini. And don't forget, we also had reference to it in the Studio Displays firmware that there was reference there to a Mac Mini 10,1. So we know they're getting ready for the release of a Mac Mini. So I'm going to nail my colors to the mast and say two Macs at WWDC, M2 Mac Mini, M2 MacBook Air. And the only reason I can see that they wouldn't ship immediately after WWDC is because of the ongoing lockdowns in China and also there is still that chip shortage. So there you go. That's what I think is going to be coming with the Mac Mini this year. But what do you want? Do you use a Mac Mini at the moment? And what would you like to see improvement wise in the next generation? Is it more I.O., more chips? quicker speeds, you tell me, you get involved and let me know what you'd love to see in this next generation of the Mac Mini that I think is coming as early as June of this year. But with that, I just want to say thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.